Perhaps the most enduring image of the Great Depression is Dorothea Lange's 1936 portrait of a migrant mother in Nipomo, California. The photographer found the woman sitting in a camp where field workers had assembled after their pea crops had failed. The Great Recession of our era perhaps has no such single image, but photographer and writer Chris Arnade has a book full of images with an equally compelling and intimate perspective of what he calls back row America. For more than 10 years, he's been traveling the country, taking pictures and writing stories about Americans forced to the margins and trying to survive. News Hour Weekend's Christopher Booker has more. As the foreclosure crisis erupted in 2008 and Wall Street's bad bets started to pull the rug from under the American economy, longtime bond trader Chris Arnotti decided to take up walking. A lot of it was just to relieve stress, to be honest. Um, you know, to kind of remove myself from my job, to kind of get a different perspective. Initially, they started with a goal, like this almost kind of um, um, cataloging, like I wanted to walk the entire length of the New York subway system. So I'd take the subway to the end of the subway, the terminus, and then walk home. Um, and I managed to walk the entire length of the New York subway system. But this process, these walks, changed things for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean to be kind of blunt, I just learned, learned how privileged I was. <laughs> and um, and how wrong my thinking was. You know, if you'd asked me prior to the financial crisis what I thought about my career on Wall Street, I would have said it was benign. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad. After the crisis, I came to the realization it wasn't, it wasn't benign, we were doing damage. These were the thoughts running through the Wall Street veteran's mind as he walked through some of the most economically challenged parts of New York City toward his million dollar Brooklyn condo. What started seeping in was this realization that we on Wall Street had messed up. This intense obs obsession with profit and efficiency and, and, and thinking that all that matters is growing the economy. Damn the consequences. Well, the consequences were really bad. But Arnadi didn't just spend his time walking. He started taking photos, posting them to a blog, and writing about what he was seeing. When you're sitting on Wall Street playing with numbers that are just blips, you can sit there and argue, we should take over these companies and we should go in and fire these employees. Well, you destroy whole communities when you do that. <laughs> and uh, so at some level, it evolved from a personal experience to kind of a political one where I saw these things that frustrated me and I kind of wanted other people to see them as well. In 2012, Arnadi left so his position as a bond trader at Citibank. No, no. He was wealthy enough to not seek another Wall Street job and instead devoted his time to documenting, quote, poverty and addiction driving all over the country to the parts of town people told him he shouldn't visit, posting his pictures along the way. In short time, his work started to attract attention. His photos and essays were featured in the Wall Street Journal, The Guardian, The New York Times, and The Atlantic. And now, seven years after he left Wall Street, his work has been compiled into the book Dignity, Seeking Respect in Back Row America. Where would you say is Back Row America? No, it's all over. I mean, it's, you know, it's not certainly not a red or blue thing. It's a lot of neighborhoods in New York City. It's, um, it's in Appalachia. It's in uh, California. It's in Chicago. It's, it's everywhere. It's, it's neighborhoods generally in communities that are often adjacent to very wealthy neighborhoods. It's kind of the bulk of the population, but the people who don't get a lot of attention, we tend to focus on what I call front row, which is people who go to Harvard or Princeton or, or what, what have you. I love that picture. Arnotti's photos and essays play like a slideshow of America's struggles, all taken from the corners of the country that appear to have been left behind. One question that comes up quite often, and you talk about throughout the book, is why don't people leave these places? You call this question insulting. Why? It's completely insulting. I mean, it's like this idea that we should all be economic migrants in our own country. You know, people shouldn't be expected to have to get up and move all the time. I mean, is that how we want to build our society? To demand that people move five, six, seven, eight times to uproot? Rather than dealing with the structural failures, we tend to simply say, oh, just move. Arnadi argues each of his images reflects something more than just struggle, a universal longing to be seen and be part of a community, even amidst some of the most challenging of circumstances. He says this is present all over the country and can often be found in one of America's most recognizable places, McDonald's. It's the ad hoc community center for a lot of communities. 
Um, and in some places, it's almost the town center, you know, if the, if the town is particularly devastated um, and there's not a lot going on, it's, it's, it's essential. So it became this thing where I come into a town, I would just go to the local, the McDonald's in the neighborhood people told me not to go. Arnotti would sit in McDonald's, talking to locals about their town, their history, and in some cases, taking their photographs. Working class people, retirees, and people living on the margins. It was in the parking lot of a McDonald's in Portsmouth, Ohio, where he took this photo, a homeless father pushing his two children in a shopping cart. It was stunned me, because nobody cared. I don't mean, like, it wasn't a lack of empathy. It was just, that's just what's happened here. Nobody thought anything about it. Clearly, the parents cared about their kids. They really cared about them. I, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna question that. But I, uh, I ended up calling Child Protective Services on them, which was really hard. I spent a, basically a day and a half fighting over that one. It was the right thing to do, though. Arnadi readily admits to getting involved with his subjects, even paying some of them for their photos. This type of involvement challenges some long-held practices. While Arnadi is documenting what he's seeing, there are arguments he's changing the story. One of the things that you talk about early on is, you know, in some instances, you actually helped people find drugs. You helped people find safe places to inject. I let people shoot up in my car. Journalistically, this raises a lot of red yeah, flags. Which is why, I'm not a, which is why under that guise, I, was, I wasn't a journalist. I, I think, look, I'm going to help somebody. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, if somebody is um, going through withdrawal, somebody I've known for two years, I'm going to help them. I'm going to either get them drugs to stop the withdrawal and then take them to detox. In 2015, the Bronx Documentary Center hosted an exhibit called Altered Images, 150 Years of Posed and Manipulated Documentary Photography. It was devoted to, quote, disputed images in photojournalism, photos that had been faked, posed, or manipulated. Some of Arnotti's pictures were included. The gallery wrote, Mr. Arnotti routinely pays his subjects, violating one of the most closely held tenets of documentary photography. It's very frustrating to me because there are no good rules, so you just really have to do your best to try to understand the privilege you have relative to the person you're dealing with. There are times that I wouldn't help people. You know, was, there was nothing good that was going to come out of it but bad, and so I didn't. And there were times when I had to use my judgment and guess, and I'm sure there were times I got it wrong. <laughs> you know? People would argue that you alter the story. But you always alter the story. There's no way not to alter the story. I mean, people think by telling you their story, they're going to get something out of it. Attention, their problem is going to be solved, and it's not. So you're always altering the story. What does the word dignity mean to you now, after you've finished this book and been working with this thesis as long as you have? Just a, a desire to be treated like a normal human being.